Hello, Internet Dwellers. Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Jupiter. The answer to the question, what if 90s Nickelodeon puked on a wardrobe? Well, speaking of the 90s, Millennials, are we halfway dead? Well, uh, I can tell you that we're going to be talking about the Millennial Midlife Crisis. As you can see, I'm experiencing, because I'm not in outer space, I'm here in Mexico City celebrating my birthday. Nobody has to know how old that is. Yes, today we are celebrating the millennial midlife crisis, a generation that is derided and infantilized by boomers and verbally abused by zoomers. There is no winning. I'll be your trained monkey today. I'll be presenting today's cringe in 3D millennial vision. So buckle up and sip that $8 latte. We're going to talk about the bad, the good, the ugly, yes in that shit sandwich order in today's video on Spaced Out. First up, the bad. Millennials, we're living in a world that our parents couldn't have dreamed of. I mean, they dream of a white picket fence. We're lucky if we can afford the fence at all. In a world where, like, eating out twice a week costs more than a down payment on a house. Seriously, why does it cost $18 for one person to eat? That's more than minimum wage. It's no wonder we feel like we're missing out. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I have scrimped and saved. I literally cut out every single simple pleasure I possibly could just so I could have enough money saved up to buy a house. Well, let's go ahead and find you the perfect home here with your hard-earned money and, uh, oh, just got an alert. Oh, I am so sorry. Uh, it looks like the boomers have crashed the economy again. Better luck in 20 years. What? A another 20 years? <laughs> Can't buy a house yet, huh? Maybe cut back on that avocado toast, kiddo. But seriously, the economy is tougher than ever. We're playing the game of life with the rules of Monopoly. Boomers handed us a world where, like, getting a college degree is basically the new high school diploma, and every entry-level position requires, like, five years of experience. You have to know, like, seven languages, and you have to juggle flaming swords. Meanwhile, boomers are all clinging on to their job positions like it's the last lifeboat of the Titanic. Hey, remember when boomers could just walk into any job interview, get a good salary, salary a pension, and a gold watch, all because they have dared to barge in on the CEO, shake his hand, and look him in the eye at the same time? Meanwhile, we get the gig economy and unpaid internships. Zero job security, by the way. They're basically making us play a game of musical chairs, but they took away like half the chairs. I remember like just a couple years ago, like probably like 2018, I found an AOL entry level position online where they required like eight or nine years of experience. Who the f does AOL think they are? <sighs> All right, let's talk about the good. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have a midlife crisis because we already did that with the quarter life crisis. A lot of us experienced our existential meltdowns in our like 20s and early 30s. We got that out of the way early. Talk about being efficient. When it came to writing this part, I'll be honest with you, I like kept rewriting and rewriting it. It's really hard to do a positive spin on this, but I want to try and hold the emotional space to give like some sort of comfort or pep talk to fellow millennials. You know, I just wanna be there to emotionally support you. But it does feel like I'm cheerleading a bunch of Sisyphus clones telling you that you're gonna make it over that hill with those rocks But we know it's just gonna they're just gonna fall back down at the beginning of the start All that being said just know that we are smashing the glass ceiling of societal expectations as a generation We're setting the path forward for anybody coming after us in this post-internet age Forget what boomers say they think that we're the ones that are out of touch But they don't know how to rotate a PDF what they say is irrelevant, okay? I think that the best way for me to show you sort of the positive spin on this about like things that are good for us in our life goals or, or what we can do now is by showing you just how miserable the boomers are. First up, let's talk about their obsession with meaningless possessions. I think my dad at one point told me whoever had the t most toys wins. They're out here collecting gadgets and cards and houses like their Pokemon cards. Okay, whatever, but they're gotta catch them all trophies or collecting dust on their shelves or whatever. Meanwhile, we realize that it's all about experiences. I mean, we can just like go out and like experience things and have memories and none of that has to fit into a storage unit. A storage unit, yeah. Something that a boomer would actually try to turn around and sell to us, call it a bachelor pad make us feel bad whenever we complain about like it not being enough space and tell us that we're too selfish to realize what we have meanwhile they're exploiting the rent from us just so they can put a little extra cheese on their whopper 
Okay, secondly, we got the old uh, hurry up, marry, breed, and settle down sort of mentality that they have. These, they felt so pressured by societal expectations that they had to hit their goal, life posts, or whatever. And when they got everything that they wanted, they realized they were completely miserable because they basically are living the equivalent of like unbuttered toast. They're, they're saltine crackers without the salt. Meanwhile, I'm out here with no kids. I'm deciding when I'm ready to have kids. But by the way, it's financially almost never ready, right? But I feel like we can go and do whatever we want. It's like we're all living at the whim of like, I don't have a house payment. I don't have kids. I'm like, I'm living in Mexico for the month for my, you know, for my birthday and just kind of living it up. That's an experience. It would be nice to have a house though. It would be nice to have a warm fireplace in the winter. That would be nice. Oh, okay, let's not forget, thirdly, the corporate grind. Our parents sacrificed their mental health and sanity to just climb that corporate ladder. For what? I mean, they, they sacrifice their happiness for their job. There's nothing sadder than that. You know, we've got the internet. We can do remote work. Yes, they're at the asking everybody to go back to the office, but you can collectively say no, especially if you're in certain positions like myself. I, I, I grant it, I understand that. Not everybody can work remotely, but we can possibly just tell people no and like start setting healthy boundaries. I mean, we have more power than ever post pandemic and we should be using it. Okay, so the audio cut out a little bit here. I was trying to make a point because we don't stay at the same boring job for 30 years and we are doing a bit of gig work and side hustling that we actually get to experiment a little and try new and interesting and different things that kind of spices up what we can do to make money. So yeah, they might call us the participation trophy generation, but I don't know, with all the f***ing crying they do, they should be called the boo hoomers. And so it comes down to the ugly. Uh, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Hashtag adulting is hard. Especially when you're a millennial. But we're nothing if not resourceful. You know, looking at this pile of student loan bills, I've been thinking of getting into interior design. Oh really? Okay, well what's your first project? I call it the weight of education. So bold. Let's dive into the abyss of the ugly, where our dreams and expectations meet the face of a cold, hard reality that really doesn't live up to our expectations. It's like finding out that you've won a lifetime supply of chocolate, only to discover that you're allergic. I don't think the second half of our lives is going to be some Hollywood rom-com with a great ending. It's probably going to be more of like a, a weird A24 horror movie featuring Mia Goth's off-putting but angelic face screaming at us while we improvise lines. Yeah, we don't get the luxury of like a stable economy. No, the second half of our life is gonna have us featuring more gig work to break even and GoFundMe campaigns to pay off our medical bills. We're gonna have to live with adjusted expectations. Aside from living with an economic recession, we're gonna have to live with a genetic recession. We're gonna have to have less kids. Each one of those things costs like 12 years of college tuition and I'm probably underselling that. I, you know, I hope you enjoyed The Hobbit because we're probably going to be living in square footage equivalent to that of a small one bedroom apartment at the Shire. The millennials in their tiny homes. And get comfortable with just no stability. I have nothing witty to add to that. That's just a cold sober fact. I don't know, ride a Gravitron or something. Maybe that'll help you adjust to the vertigo. Maybe we should just expect to live in like a 26 bedroom warehouse. We're all just being taken care of by our other elder friends and gorillas that have learned sign language. Speaking of expectations, I don't think boomers are going to have to worry about us putting them in, uh, in a home because we're not going to be able to afford one for them. No, they're going to be left in their like sharper image jet ski recliners to like rot as they clutch onto their material possessions that failed to make them happy while they stink up their cookie cutter McMansions. <sighs> So fellow millennials, I raise to you a toast with our overpriced craft beers, of course, to say that, yeah, we may not have the traditional markers of success. Uh, we may not have the traditional fence posts of stability, uh, but we will have memories, connections, and a bountiful supply of memes, I guess, to get us through this second half of life. And really, I mean, I guess at the end, isn't that what counts? I mean, besides clout. I mean, this is, a, besides clout, this is a adequate silver medal. That's what counts, right? Rant over, I guess. I love you all. Good night. Please be sure to check out the channel. Subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. I love you all. Seriously, give me a kiss before you go. Mm.